Hey everybody, so if you are rendering characters in Blender and you are rendering them out in cycles and using motion blur, I wanted to showcase an issue that you might come across um, and present to you a workaround and a couple solutions on how to solve this. So let's take a look at the problem here. Um, for instance, uh, I have my live action shot here. We have our Witcher character who's going to be fighting this wraith. So I we'll have this 3D motion tracked. Um, this wraith is going to materialize in, uh, get hit by our Witcher, and then teleport away. So we got our character rigged and animated. So can even render out some test frames. Uh, we have some motion blur here, and everything's looking good. So you might not think that anything would go wrong. But then when we go to render, oh no, what the heck is that? It looks like we have some weird edges just like showing up and appearing. So if you want to skip ahead to the solution, um, I'm going to put a timestamp in the video and you can just skip ahead to this time. Um, there will also be chapter markers in the video. But if you want an in-depth overview of what is going on, uh, feel free to watch the whole video. So uh, I wasn't even sure what to call this glitch, so it was really hard to troubleshoot and to search around on the internet for like just some sort of edge flicker or ripped triangles or something. When it came to this project, I tried in, um, some troubleshooting. Uh, I still couldn't find a solution to it, um, so then really quickly I tried like different motion blur settings. I tried activating and deactivating my subdivision surface. Um, long story short, nothing solved it. Everything pointed towards if you activate motion blur in cycles while using an armature deform, this problem will show up. Um, interestingly, when I increased the motion blur from 0.2 was my original render to 0.75, which is what you're looking at now, the problem would still show up, but it showed up on less frames. So I found that interesting. Um, I even tried it on uh, some hard surface models, like Kylo Ren's command shuttle, and I get the same problem. I also tried switching it from CPU rendering to GPU. Nope, still got the same exact problem. Uh, I even tried changing the camera angle, like maybe this was something to do with, like it was only showing up at certain angles, but I moved the camera and lo and behold, those weird edges that kept ghosting in uh, were still there. So after many sleepless nights and hours upon hours of Google searching, I was like a hair away from submitting this as a bug report when I actually came across a bug report from 2019 uh, showcasing the same exact issue. Um, so I'll link to this page in the description below, but what's actually happening is the cycles motion blur does not support any topology changes. And when you're using something like AutoSmooth in Blender, uh, that's actually changing the topology over the course of time when you're animating a character like this. Uh, you can see that I have my AutoSmooth on. If I uncheck it, this is what the character looks like shaded smooth. And then this is what our character looks like shaded flat. So as we're probably all well aware, the AutoSmooth setting is looking for any angles that are sharper than the angle listed, and shading the interaction between those faces flat and the other faces smooth. The thing is, when you have something like a character animated, um, those angles are going to be changing over time. So for instance, if you look at my character's um, kind of like chest wrap here, um, if I go scrub through a little bit, you'll see some angles popping in and out there because they're crossing that 30 degree threshold as the armature deforms everything. So for whatever reason, these kinds of topology changes are incompatible with the motion blur in cycles, and it just makes it bug out. So here's just a basic example of what's going on here. I have a plane um, with a few loops cut into the middle of it. Um, this plane is also set to shade auto smooth and then I have an armature to deform it and bend it. So as I bend this plane we're getting a smooth interaction at the bend here but let's see what happens if we keep going. 
at a certain point it's going to start shading that flat because that angle is now sharper than the angle that we have listed. Um, so I could, for example, increase this angle and get that to shade smooth again. Um, like for example, if I go all the way up to 45, back into pose mode, keep bending it, and the same thing is going to happen. So what can we do to fix this? Well, first I want to show you a possible workaround that can definitely work in some cases, but it definitely has its limitations and pitfalls. So I'm not necessarily going to recommend it, but I'm also not going to discourage it because it's definitely a good thing to have up your sleeve. So once again, if you want to skip ahead to the real solution, go check out that timestamp. For instance, I have this scene of Suzanne falling from the sky, and we got some cool materials on things in this scene. So let's back up to a frame where there should be some motion blur. And one workaround to get motion blur is to uncheck the motion blur in the render settings and use vector motion blur instead. And vector motion blur will let us render out our scene and then composite in motion blur after the fact. So in order to do that, we need to go into our view layers here. We'll need to enable the Z depth and the vector. So then if I render out this frame, you can see that there's no motion blur because we have motion blur unchecked. And then hopping over to our compositing tab, we'll see that we have our image, um, we have our depth, and we have a vector pass. Um, also, for the sake of example, um, I have an emission pass, and we'll get to that in a second. So this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use vector motion blur, but really quick, what you would do is add the vector blur here. Depth goes to Z, vector goes to speed, and now you can see that it's added motion blur but there's a few problems. You can see that in this kind of a scene, uh, the edges look pretty nasty here, but I have used vector blur on other types of scenes and the edges look totally fine. But the main pitfalls of vector blur is you can see that in the reflection here, there's no motion blur, um, and there also isn't on the shadow. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but if we toggle this on and off, there's no difference in the shadow between the two. Another pitfall is that if you are exporting other passes like an emission pass, um, depending on how you are going about your compositing, it might complicate things because now you have an emission pass that doesn't have any motion blur on it. Um, so it might not be a problem depending on how you are compositing things, especially if you are staying in Blender to composite. But if you're bringing things over into something like After Effects, this could be a little bit annoying because you might need to do something like duplicate the vector blur, you know, make sure everything's plugged in here, uh, make sure that the settings are the same between the two, and then you have your motion blur on the emission pass as well. So, you know, it's not too bad, but you can see how your node tree might get really cluttered really quickly. Uh, doing it this way. Another problem with uh, vector blur is when you have um, transparent objects. So if I re-enable this like picture frame that I have in the scene here and go and re-render this, now you can see that similar to the reflection um, pass, there's no motion blur where there's a transparent object. Um, and the reason this is happening is if you have a look at our vector data, it's only showing up for rays that the camera is directly seeing. For whatever reason, it doesn't work with transparent or reflected rays. There's probably ways around this. Maybe for something like transparent objects, you can go into the view layers here and set things and create multiple view layers where some collections are set to hold out and others are set to indirect and all this stuff, but that's getting really complicated for all I want is just some motion blur. And then last example with uh, the vector blur is say I have, you know, a transparent object that then moves. Let's see what happens if I render this out. 
So now you can see that looking at our vector pass, um, our picture frame is pink here because it's moving to the side, but the entire thing is pink, so it's going to blur whatever is seen through it uh, to that vector as well. You know, this, this Tron cube thing shouldn't be blurred, but here we are with the blur on it because of the vector pass. So I've rendered out plenty of things with vector blur and it's been fine. For example, these Star Wars shots uh, were all using vector blur. So it's a good tool to have up your sleeve, but maybe not the solution that we're looking for here. So going back to our animated character here, the two solutions that will work are either unchecking the auto smooth and then using an edge split modifier or using custom split normals. So let's have a look at edge split first. You'll notice that when you put the modifier on your object, uh, you'll have this edge angle and sharp edges checkboxes. So what the edge angle does is it will split edges based on angles, and this works exactly like auto smooth. And just so that we're clear on what the edge split modifier is doing, it is quite literally splitting edges. So we have our default cube here, and if I select a face and try and move that, all of these edges are glued together. If I add the edge split modifier, go ahead and apply it, go back into edit mode. Now if I grab a face, you can see that all of these edges have been split. So there are a bunch of new vertices and a bunch of new edges. And the reason why this works like auto smooth is because now that these edges are two separate edges, it won't smooth, it won't try and smooth the faces between them. So just like auto smooth, you can't actually render this out with the edge angle checked um, and an angle set because the same exact thing will happen. Uh, the angles are changing throughout the animation, therefore it's splitting different edges at different time, therefore the topology changes, therefore motion blur freaks out. So how do we make sure that the topology isn't changing over time? Well, first we're going to need to uncheck edge angle here, and now we're going to need to use um, sharp edges. So right now, if I go into edit mode, um, you'll see that none of my edges are marked sharp, and because this edge split modifier is looking for any sharp edges in order to split them, um, nothing's happening. Uh, so if I toggle this, nothing happens. So the way this will work is I'm going to zoom in here, I'm going to select what edges should be sharp, um, Control e to get to the edge menu, mark sharp, and you can see now that the shading between those is now shaded flat because it is splitting that edge and therefore not trying to smooth the shading between those faces. So obviously you can either go through your model manually, but on something like this that's going to take forever. So what you can do here is you can go up into Select, Select Sharp Edges, and then you can uh, um, pick what angle you want to mark your edges. And then with all of that selected, you can hit Control e Mark Sharp, and then all of those are going to be split by the Edge Split modifier. Um, and you can go in and then clean up whatever edges that it selected that you do not want sharp, like clear sharp. If we go ahead and render this out now, we'll see that motion blur is working and our character is shaded the way that we want. And because we're using specific edges that are marked in the mesh itself that the edge split modifier is going to use, um, the topology doesn't change over time. That edge will always be split no matter how the armature is deforming it. Um, one important thing to note, though, is that um, your edge split modifier is going to need to be towards the end of everything. You're not going to want to have this above your subdivision or your armature because if you split the edges before a subdivision happens, um, you'll see that those split edges are going to get kind of torn apart by subdivision. So just make sure that your edge split comes after your armature and subdivision. The other solution is to add custom split normals. 
And the way that you would do this is you'll have um, your object shaded auto smooth, and then you just come down to geometry data and literally click add custom split normals. You'll notice that this grays out um, and you won't be able to change the angle anymore. But if you render this out, it actually works. Um, I tried looking into what exactly custom split normals are and how exactly they work, and in all honesty, after several articles and tutorials, I still don't have the greatest grasp on it, so I don't have the best explanation for you. But from what I gather, there is multiple ways of creating custom normals, and then uh, by hitting the add custom split normals data, it gets those normals to stick. Um, it's kind of like applying a modifier. Um, I know there are other modifiers like the weighted normals modifier, and then you can also apply that in the modifier stack. So I'm not sure what the difference is between applying it in here versus clicking the add custom split normals data. But in any case, um, if you're having a model that's glitching out over time, what you might be able to do is to just click one button, hit render, and hopefully that solves your problems. But in case this doesn't work, you can always fall back on the edge split solution. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. If this has helped you out in any way, please feel free to leave a like and a comment. Um, I'm really excited for this scene that we're working on. It's part of a bigger video that is going to be going out sometime soon. So if you want to see the, the final shot in action here, definitely go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss it. And of course, once it's up, I'll leave a link in the video description. So thanks again for watching, and see you in the next one.